This episode continues working on the plastic uh, pellet maker. Uh, this won't be the last one, we'll probably have one more. Welcome to another episode. As you'll see in this video, I've made a lot of progress with the design for the pellet chopper or the pellet maker that will take filament I extrude with additives and chop it back into plastic pellets for my injection molding machine. I made good progress uh, most of the way. The last part you'll see is a little bit more complicated than I like and I have ideas for how to improve that. But mainly what I want to show you with the, uh, the, the sequence of uh, designs is how I progress in my thinking about what the design should be and continue to try new ideas. Um, this is called iterative design and it's based on the idea of you don't know enough in the beginning to come up with the best design. So you have to learn as you go and change your mind about how you do things as you go. So let's go uh, to the bench and I'll show you the designs that I've been working on. So here's the mechanism I had last time and just to remind you if I hold on to it like this you can see that with some additional friction, I can keep it from rotating the other direction. I wasn't sure I was going to have that much friction with the filament. So at the time I was thinking that I needed a, a second spray clutch to ensure that it would rotate in only one direction. But then after thinking about it for, uh, for a while, I came up with another direction. So let me get that set up and I'll show you the new idea. Here's the new version and I effectively turned it upside down. So instead of driving the outside, which I was doing before, uh, as you can see here, I was driving the outside of the clutch. Now what I'm going to do is uh, drive the inside of the clutch. Uh, the other thing is I could make this a single piece, uh, so that makes it a little easier to assemble. So I'll put the clutch inside, like so, and then you can see it just uh, goes into the top there. It's probably easier to take it out and then put it in because uh, it's keyed. And then I have this uh, ratchet and pawl arrangement. So now you can see I can move the rack back and forth and it will only move in one direction. And now this is doing exactly the movement that I want. So this proved to be much more uh, useful. And this is an example of why it's sometimes helpful to build part of the mechanism and then think about it before continuing the design. Because if I had continued the design with what I had before, I probably would have finished it and it would have been a lot more complicated than what I have here and the direction this has taken me. Uh, since I built this, I've created some other parts. So let me go, ho go and uh, assemble those and you'll see how this design is evolving. And by the way, uh, this piece right here, <coughs> the, the pole, is just a friction fit into a slot there. And uh, you can see that it has a little point on the end there. And then it's, uh, the force is basically the flexibility of the plastic. So most of this is assembled without any fasteners at all. In fact, the only fastener is to hold the the hobbed gear in place. Here's the next iteration. What I'm working on here is having a mechanism that can push the rack back and forth uh, with a rotating crank or a rotating pulley or some other mechanism. I pretty much followed what I saw in the mechanism that was in Tom Lipton's video where there's uh, an eccentric. You can see this is the pivot right there in the center and it moves to the side and then it pushes these to the side as well. And that causes it to turn a little bit down here for each turn of this eccentric. Now the thing I, I discovered with this is that turning this way is easy, but turning this way requires a lot more force and it binds against this piece here. And the reason it requires more force is because of the force required to turn the spread clutch in the freewheeling direction. So it's not really a freewheeling. It does have friction associated with it. Uh, 
I'm making progress as you can see. This is the version after several more iterations. You'll notice that I replaced the cam with a, I'm not sure what this is called, but basically with a, a bar that rotates and then is connected to this and pulls this one. Now because they're connected in the back, it uh, will also uh, work in the other direction. But I have it set up so that um, this direction here when it's pulling is when we're pulling against the spread clutch. So I'm using tension as the main driving force uh, or the higher driving force and then uh, compression in this cycle against the uh, ratchet and pawl. This uh, is working quite well. So the next step after this will be to mount a cutter. And I'm thinking about using this one instead of the one that I showed last time, uh, mainly because I have two of these. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple mounting points so that it will fit back on here somewhere. And I'll have to probably extend this uh, plate out quite a bit so I have the mounting points. And then what I'm thinking at this point is that I'm going to have a mounting for the top and then I'll have a mechanism uh, basically that pulls on the, the bottom. Uh, and it may be mounted more like this. And so that way when it pulls up, you know, using some type of arrangement like this, it'll cut the filament. This is what I ended up with and I'm not very happy with it. So I'm going to redo the design. Uh, one of the problems is that this does move around a little bit. I can fix that easily by having the material come up here and hold this in place. Still, this does seem very ugly and overkill and I'm really not very happy with it. But it probably could uh, be something that I could get to work. It just really bothers my design sensibilities. So what I'm going to do instead, probably in the next video, is I'm going to replace this uh, with two pieces of steel that have holes in them and then pivot just like this. But that will give me a lot more control so I can mount one of the pieces of steel exactly where I want it connected to this. And then the other piece can be pivot and I'll have a simpler mechanism that uh, will cause them to slide and essentially shear off the, the filament right here. So I'll see you next time and hopefully we'll have something that is not as ugly and ungainly and uh, crazy as this mechanism. See you next time. <music>